Uh, I'd like to welcome everybody here in the audience and welcome everybody watching at home, work, and any other place you may be watching. Um, I do want to thank, first off, Creative Live for inviting me back. It's an honor to be here. They have a lot of great instructors. And to somehow kind of be lumped in with that group uh, feels good. And so it's, it's nice to be here. Um, this is a really good spot that we're at right now. Um, I'm sure all of you have some experience shooting, but going back right to the start, going to the beginning and getting it right. Uh, that's what this class is going to be about. Uh, I'm sure you know everyone picks up a camera at a young age and shoots a few pictures here or there, and then they kind of get into it a little bit. But sometimes a lot of people, they don't really understand all the basic things that are going on. And that creates problems on our foundation as we get better as a photographer. And that's my goal in this class, is to really build a strong foundation um, on whatever it is that you want to do. And so uh, I'm glad you're here. This is a great time to be here. Uh, we've got great sections throughout this, uh, the class. Today's, today, we're going to start with some kind of some fun stuff here um, in the first talk that we're going to do today. What I would like to do, well, actually, let me explain a little bit about the John Gringo classes. Uh, if you've watched classes with Creative Live, uh, you'll notice I don't have any models and I don't have a white seamless background. We're not going to be doing a lot of studio shooting. We're not really going to be doing any shooting at all. Most of this is going to be a lecture. Unfortunately, you're going to be listening to me just talk and talk and talk and talk. Uh, but hopefully, uh, I'll have some other good graphics and things going on on the screen. I try to have visuals for everything that I say. And so if you can see the screen, you're going to learn. All right? And so if you're watching at work, and you have me down on the like, little lower monitor down here, and the screen's up there, and you're kind of working, and you're doing your other stuff, and you're like, I'll just listen and pick up a lot of stuff, it's not going to be easy. Uh, because you're going to be constantly wanting to look, because I'm going to be directing, this is how this works. This is what this looks like. And so uh, my recommendation is to, uh, you're gonna, I, this is going to sound strange, and people in the office are going to freak out, turn off Creative Live, just go work for the whole week, and buy the class. And then you can watch it at your own pace. Or you might want to you know, listen in on some, on some of the previews of what's going on. Uh, but this is the type of class that you want to see the screen. It's going to be hard just to listen to the audio on it. Uh, we have, we've got some students here in the audience, and I normally teach to students who are really trying to get some questions answered. And what we're going to do is I want to go around the room, find out who's here. Um, and so just you know, give me a name, and tell me a little bit about why you are here, what it is specific that you're trying to do. Maybe you're starting a business, and you make jewelry, and you want to photograph jewelry, or you're a real estate agent, and you want to do your own photography, because photographers are just so darn expensive, you're going to do it yourself. Or maybe you're a mom and, or dad and you want to take pictures of your kids playing sports and other things. And I think we're going to go ahead and start right over here on the couch in front. Hello. Good morning. I'm Sarah Van Osdell. Thank you for having me, John. Um, I've been on Creative Life set last week for Laura Shoe Lightroom, which was absolutely awesome. So I'm excited to be back. But um, I'm a photographer in the Seattle area, and uh, I've actually just never had any training. So I've been self-taught for the last three years, and I'm just excited to learn the fundamentals and kind of just have a better grasp and learn some more. It's knowledge is power. So good. good. So what type of photography do you do? I do portraits and weddings. I do okay. real estate as well, kind of all, right. all over the board since I'm new. So um, just kind of getting my feet wet, but so you're making a, you're making a little bit of money from photography. I'm doing it full time. So wow. Yeah, it's kind of I'm a little bit backwards right now. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, I just feel like I can always learn more. So that's why I'm here. I'd I'm like always to get yeah. Some I'm scared to have someone like you in the class because it's like maybe you know more than I do. But I've yeah. I've had some people in your in your shoes before that have come to the class and they've actually come up to me before and they said, I don't know if I should be here. You know, because I, I have my own business, and you know, I think this class is too easy, but they came out and they loved it, because there's yeah. just tons of stuff presented in a different way. So yeah. great, I'm great excited. to have you here. Thank you. Hi, I'm Mackenzie Olds. Um, I'm from Seattle, and actually, this is my first real kind of experience with photography. I've always been interested. Um, watch quite a few Creative Live, and, um, and my interest has just gone up from there, so I knew this would be a great course to take. So now you say you're just starting with photography, is that right? Yeah. Now, yeah. did I see someone loaning you a camera this morning? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I am uh, pretty much as new as you can get. But um, yeah, I've, I've learned a lot listening, uh, listening in on the past Creative Live uh, workshops. So 
I'm hoping that I'll be able to keep up, but I'm excited to learn. <laughs> well, good. No, you're going to be in a great position there. Good. Now, I think, I'm not sure, I think we're going to go to the back row, just because we're right in that area. Hi, John. Good to see you this morning. I'm Emily Wilson. I am a Seattle resident, and I like travel photography. And John and I actually have traveled together. I specialize in tour leading North Africa and the Middle East, and I'm always looking for more information how to be a better photographer. Emily is one of my best students. She's been to a number of my classes. And I told her, I go, this is some of the same stuff you've seen before. And she goes, ah, I want to still see it again. So yeah, Emily and I led a tour in Jordan last year. And we were scouting Egypt for a potential tour site kind of before the revolution was going on there. And we got some great stuff. And I'm really looking forward to going back to Egypt with Emily and probably about like just this many people right here. Oh, you want to go too? OK, yeah. that'd be great. You know, about Six, 10 eight, people. 10 people, a great size group. Yeah. Really get the, close to the people of the country and see the landscape and all the sites. Yeah, go to the pyramids. The camel auction was awesome. Yeah. Fun stuff. Good to have you here. Thank you. Hi, I'm uh, Catherine Gooding. And I'm getting started in a real estate photography business. And so I'm yeah, here I can to always get, pick them out. <laughs> I'm here to, to just, um, like Susan said, just let this stuff soak in. You know, I've been taking digital photography for four or five years. But you know, there's just so much to learn that you know, every time you can get exposed to it, it, it makes a big difference. So uh, my other goal is to get faster at making decisions about the camera in um, unscripted situations like community events or event type photography. So thank you. Excellent. That sounds good. Sounds good. So we're going to kind of switch over here to this couch. And since you're holding the mic, you can go first. Hi, I'm Linda Kenny, and I hope I don't cough. Um, I've taken a lot of digital photography classes, and it just some of it sinks in and some of it doesn't. And then when I have the camera in my hand out in the field, I forget everything. It flutters away very it quickly. It just really, really does. Yeah. So. Um, I now call myself a digital artist because I make collages out of all the bad pic pictures oh, okay. that I take. <laughs> but I managed to actually sell a fair amount of it. But I really would like to. I, I really expect this to be career changing, John. I've, I, well, that, I'm, that's rather I, <laughs> high expectations, but, but I, think I appreciate it. I think it's reasonable. I really do, because I know how well you teach. OK. Well, hopefully my instructions will have roots that sink deeper down and grab hold of more I've, information. I believe they will. Let's, uh, let's go right over here. Hi, I'm Linda Lebetchik. Um, I'm just getting started in a portrait and event photography business too. And um, like Sarah, I've never had any formal you know, training. So I just wanted to make sure I'm covering all my bases and just really want to get in there. And super psyched to be here. So. And so I see you got, you got your camera right there next to you. And so um, let's see this camera. Yeah, it's and just so, a... And so tell us about your camera. Um, it's just a 300D uh, Canon Rebel, so... And Rebel. so this is, this is one of the original <laughs> digital yes. SLRs. Yes. And it's got a really cheap lens on it. Yes. But you can do amazing <laughs> things with this. I love that And lens. there's so many <laughs> photographers getting fancier new cameras that they're casting this stuff off, you know, for a few hundred bucks. Did yes. you buy it new or used? Or? Um, I bought it used um, about a year ago, and I just, I've never. How much did you pay? About $150. $150 for that. <laughs> and I and just never had a reason to That's pretty upgrade, good. And you're making so. money from that. Yes, I am. <laughs> so you don't need the latest, greatest $3,000 camera. It's nice. But trust me, I like it. But, you know, it's not completely necessary. That's great to see. Yeah. OK. Awesome. And let's go down here. Hi, good morning. My good name morning. is Wynn. I'm from Seattle. And uh, my background is in uh, theater, interior design. I do makeup design. Um, and uh, a lot of my best friends are professional photographers. So I <laughs> often work <laughs> as, um, as an assistant with them. Um, I do a lot of art direction and styling, um, as well as, you know, doing kind of secondary kind of <laughs> uh, photographer sort of jobs. But I, this is perfect for me because um, I've never really taken the fundamentals. So, so excited. And I'm so stoked about how many slides you have. <laughs> I can see on the monitor. It's awesome. I'm such a visual learner. So oh, good. Yeah. And so you. What, do you, what do you see yourself doing with photography six months, a year down the road? Um, well, uh, I'm not quite sure yet. Okay, uh, that's okay. That's a fine answer. Yeah. I still don't know what I want to shoot when I grow up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm open to all opportunities. So yeah, 
excited to learn. All right. Thank you well, for good. having me. Let's have you hand the microphone back there. Hey, my name is Joe. I'm uh, from Bellevue, Washington, and uh, I'm a senior citizen. And I uh, got into photography by accident. Mm. Uh, my son went to college. He left his camera. And I said, uh, what's wrong with this? It's broken. I said, OK, I'll see if I can save some money, you know, maybe get it fixed. And uh, I went to the uh, camera store, and they said, oh, it just needs cleaning. My son is just one of those. If it doesn't work, it's broken. <laughs> Anyway, and so that's how I got started with camera, and uh, I started reading books, attended uh, short uh, YouTube here and there, and uh, after uh, using the camera, I, I would click, and it would not click. I said, what's wrong with this camera? And uh, uh, learning that you need to have uh, setups, and you need to know more about lenses and lightings and all this kind of you know, funky things for me at that time. It's still funky for me. <laughs> and uh, I'm here to uh, hopefully I can understand how the camera works. I have some good pictures, but it's pure luck. Uh, <laughs> well, let's, let's, let's try to get away from the pure luck. And pure luck is nice when we get it there. <laughs> and, and so, so what I, did I've you heard do of here? rescue dogs, but you have a rescue camera. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My friends would ask me, what did you do here? I says, I don't know. I just click it. I got this. Yeah. And, and, and that's how I'm, I'm here to learn. Oh, more. good. Well, excellent. It sounds like that's a, that's a great story. So thank you. Thank you. And our final student. Hi there. Um, my name is Kevin. I'm from the area I'm across the Puget Sound in Gig Harbor. And I'm here. Um, I got my start in art a long time ago, but I've gone away from it. I've um, been in a couple different industries. And um, since meeting my wife about a year ago, um, she's really been into it. She's had her own business, and we've decided to start doing it more full time. And so I'm here to. Um, learn the digital side of it. I was a film guy and a lot of the early, early um, computer stuff, visual arts stuff. So that's where I'm at. All right. Yeah. Well, you know, one of the things that happens in a lot of my classes is I get students who shot film, like I did. Some of you, I think, are too young to have shot much film. Uh, and, uh, but um, there is, there's a lot of things that kind of have kind of changed. And so what's kind of interesting is, let's see, tomorrow morning's talk is all on sensors. You know, 15 years ago, that would have been the talk on film. Because, you know, you had to know about all the different types of film and how they handle light and all these sorts of things. And now, downloading and RAW and JPEG, and we're going to be going into those things. And so that's, that's kind of a whole new element that we all need to deal with. It's just the world we live in. Uh, there's some things that I love about it, some things that I'm not too fond of. But that's what we have to work with. So uh, as, as you can all see at home, that we've got a variety of students. And maybe you can identify with some of their stories and kind of the directions that they're coming at this from. In the, in the world of photography, we really do have a wide group of people. I mean, we got young kids in high school. I mean, there was someone on CNN, this high school girl who was featured on CNN for her photography. Uh, but then we got the old dogs you know, who've been shooting film all their life transitioning over to digital. And so it's a, it's a fun, wacky party, as I like to think of it, uh, here in the photography world. We don't have a lot of rules. You can kind of do whatever you want. Um, uh, and it's, it's, it's all good, because we all have our own interpretation of it. So I don't want to dwell too much on me, but I'll give you just a little bit uh, of my history. When I was 10 years old, I found a camera on the bicycle trail through Seattle. It was a little tiny, just horrible 110 camera. But I found it, and there wasn't anyone around. And so I uh, took the roll of film out and bought a new little 110 cartridge and just started taking pictures. And I uh, kept that up for a couple of years. And then my parents gave me a better 110 that had a built-in flash. And I uh, used that for quite a while. And uh, eventually, when I got into college, I needed to take an art class. And I wasn't, I'm not really much of an art guy, or at least I wasn't at the time. And so it's like, well, this would be the best way for me to get my art requirements in. I took one photography class and was totally sold. Uh, just totally loved all the aspects of it, from going out and shooting, to going into the dark room, to the equipment, um, to being able to take something that I created and put it up on the wall. And I thought that was just the greatest thing ever. And there wasn't a lot of education programs. There's not a lot of college degrees in photography. I don't believe there's anyone that offers a four-year degree in wedding photography. 
even though that's a very viable route for a lot of people to go. Uh, there should be, you know, at a, at a four-year university. Uh, but there isn't. And so what I did is I went into, not that that's what I wanted to do, but I, I went into photojournalism. And I uh, got, uh, got my degree in photojournalism and got out of school and promptly could not find a job anywhere because the economy was in a slump and all the big papers were laying off and they were going to the small newspapers and there was nothing left for, for the newcomers. And so I ended up grabbing a job in the camera store. And I know there's a lot of uh, great photographers working in the camera store. I'm with you guys. Uh, you know, they're kind of struggling through. It's kind of like being an actress in Hollywood and you work as a waitress, you know, kind of paying the bills, trying to, trying to stay in touch with the industry. And during that time, I just gave myself my own projects. And one of the things I love to do is I love to travel. So me and a buddy, we went to Iceland. And we rode our bikes for six weeks around Iceland. And when we went, I knew not only I'm not just going to take pictures, but I'm going to document this as a story. And we're going to put together a slideshow of some sort. And my buddy, who really wasn't into photography, says, well, yeah, that's fine. And we went there. And all of a sudden, he saw me getting into photography. And you know, it's like, well, what are you getting up now for? It's like, no, it's great light. You've got to get out of here and see this. It's amazing. And all of a sudden, he started seeing the world through my photographer's eyes. And he started suddenly getting into it. And he was kind of upset that he just had a little point and shoot camera. And he eventually got a single lens reflex on, on future trips that we went on. But we ended up taking those hundreds and hundreds of pictures. And we whittled them down. And we made a 45-minute documentary that we would present live at outdoor clothing stores, uh, bicycle clubs, and other groups. And it was just so intoxicating to be able to document a story and then present it again. Um, and I just we did this over and over again in a number of different areas. We took some wild canoe and kayaking trips. We went mountaineering. We went bicycling across Alaska and down through South America. And all of this eventually led up to the coolest job offer ever, working for Art Wolf and the TV show Travels to the Edge. And got to be a part of a four-person crew that traveled like all the cool places in the world. We went to Africa and South America. We went to Australia, Antarctica, up in Alaska, just tons of places. And working with a great photographer uh, just kind of really improved my photography so much. And you know, if you can latch on to a good photographer and learn from them, there is so much that you can pick up. Um, and so assisting for a better photographer is a great way of learning. Sometimes it's not the best time spent as far as money, how much you might make working as an assistant, but learning how they see and picking up what works for you is a very, very valuable thing. And so uh, after a couple of years, the economy kind of went down again, and uh, the, the show lost funding. And so I started to teach classes because he had a gallery down there. And so I sat down to put the material together for essentially the class that we're going to see here. And it was kind of a, a long moment where I'm sitting there at the computer going, all right, how do I do this? OK, I kind of had a list of subjects that I need to talk about. And I realized right then and there, this needs to be visual. I can't just tell people where to set the ISO on the camera. I have to show them because I'm a visual person. And as I put this class together, I realized why I did so poorly in high school. I got terrible grades in high school. I'm a visual learner. You read, if I read a history book, I pick up little bits of it there. But if it can be presented in a visual manner, I pick it up a lot easier. And I'm like, this is going to work for photographers because photographers are visual people. They want to see stuff. And so my classes have caught on pretty well. Um, I usually have sold out classes. And word has spread a little bit um, because I do this very visual style. So pretty much everything I have, just look up on the screen. Just see what's going on on the screen, and you're going to figure out what's going on. And so that's kind of my style and the way I like to teach. Um, I don't like to rely on what I say or my presenting it. Just look at the screen. We've had a number of people in other countries who like watching my classes because even if they can't understand me, they can just watch the screen and pick up tons of stuff, which is, which is good. Because if, you're, if you can understand me, uh, then you're going to get it from both sides. And that's a good thing. So. Uh, Let's talk about what this week is going to be like. So this first class is different than all the others. This is just going to be basically a lecture. And what I, do, what I want to do here is I want to set the proper tone for the class and photography. And so we're going to kind of dispel some photographic myths here to start with. And 
I think there's a lot of misconceptions about photography, and this first part is about clearing that off. And some of you may go, well, no, I just want to get to the good stuff, you know, shutter speeds, apertures, composition. No, we got to lay the groundwork. We got to clear the ground right now. You know, we're going to build this foundation. Before we put the foundation in, we got to clear the ground, and that's what this first class is. Now, after the uh, lunch break this afternoon, we're going to get into cameras. We've got some fun cameras here. I actually brought in some of my old cameras that I have personally, uh, just because I want to feel at home here. Um, so we got some cool, really old cameras here and some more modern cameras as well. Uh, but we're going to talk about cameras today, different types of cameras, single lens reflex, the mirrorless, the point and shoot cameras, and all of that today, or later today. And then tomorrow, we're going to talk about the sensors in the camera, the different size sensors. Maybe you have an APS-C sensor, and maybe you don't even know what that is. But we're going to tell you and compare that with a full-frame sensor and how much difference and how, how much you need to upgrade or don't upgrade, don't need to upgrade uh, with, with all the different cameras. And then tomorrow, let's see if I have this memorized. Um, okay, so we have sensors tomorrow, and then we get into lenses, which is like my favorite thing. I love lenses. You know, give me one camera but 100 lenses. Uh, that's where the action is in photography in my mind. And so that, tomorrow's we got good stuff. Now, Wednesday is what I'm going to call trench warfare. Okay, this is exposure and focus. These are the fundamentals of the fundamentals. These are the things that you have to get right out in the field. And so Wednesday is a critical day for everyone. And then Thursday, okay, that one's pretty critical too, um, <laughs> because we're going to be dealing with light and then kind of a fun one, gadget bag. We have a lot of gadgets in photography, and there's some things that are really valuable and some things that you don't need. Uh, and so that's going to have some fun parts there, but there's a very large section on light. And understanding light is a fundamental concept in photography. And then, well, maybe if you could only be here one day, maybe Friday's the day. Uh, <laughs> That's the day. That's that. Okay. The new style in movies is to have the final in two parts, and that's what Friday is. We're going to have composition one and composition two. It's all just one big class, and hopefully there you're just going to be able to pick up just lots of ideas on your type of photography. It may be completely different than mine, but you'll start picking up ideas, putting them in the back back of your head, and then every once in a while when you're shooting pictures, they're going to come up to the front. Ah, I got an idea, and you're going to forget where it came from. You don't need to credit me, but I just want to implant those ideas in there so that you have all those things that you can grab onto when necessary. 